Hi everyone, my name is Shinora and welcome to Anointed with Power's first virtual conference, Pressing In When the World is in Crisis. We have an amazing lineup for you, but first, let me mention our raffle. If you would like to enter, please comment Amen below and I'll add your name to the list and we will announce the winner at the end of the conference. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. First up is Prophetess Kristen Lorry, the CEO and founder of Anointed with Powers. Hi guys, welcome to Anointed with Power Ministries. I am Prophetess Kristen Laurie, and it is an honor to be before you all. So welcome, welcome to our first virtual conference. My team and I, we are so used to putting on at least one to two live events per year. So of course this year, due to the pandemic, God has really pressed on us to do something virtual for you all. So tonight we have three guest speakers including myself and a lovely moderator and I am excited I am excited to be before you all during a time such as this so our conference is titled pushing through in a time of crisis pushing through during a time of crisis my God my God so let's open up with a word of prayer father God we thank you for this wonderful night father God we thank you for bringing us all together as your children Lord father God we just thank you for everything that you have done in our lives and what you continue to do and what you will do father God Lord we just thank you for your amazing grace and father God we just ask for forgiveness father God we just ask ask for divine alignment. Father God, we just ask, Father God, that you just show us the way and you direct our paths. Lord, we love you, Father God. You are the light in our lives, Father God. You just make our lives just wonderful and just extraordinary every day just by reading your word. Lord, you are the word, Father God. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, Father God. We love you, the only true King, Father God. We worship you, O Lord. And in your precious name, Jesus, I say, same. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to open up with some scripture. So for in him, we live and move and have our being. We are his offspring. Acts 17 through 28. I picked that scripture because I love where it says we are his offspring. I love that. We are a part of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are a part of God. We are his offspring. Thank you, Jesus. For those of you who feel alone, Holy Spirit, I feel your presence in here tonight. For those of us who are alone, God is saying you are my offspring. Jesus us for the motherless for the fatherless God is saying you are my offspring so for those of you who have been alienated from your family for those of you who are without a mother without a father God wanted me to put this out here that we are his offspring we are not alone in the name of Jesus we belong to him thank you Lord especially during a time such as this we are his offspring we do belong to him thank you father God hallelujah you thank you Jesus so right now we are going through such a such a such a historic time the nation is divided Christians are divided families are divided a nation is divided Okay, and right now God is calling on us as his children to be the light. He is calling on us to not react with our emotion, to not react based off of what people say we should and how we should react because of the color of our skin or because of where we come from. God is saying, I need you to be different. I need you to be my offspring. I need you to be my light. I need you to be the vessel that I have called you to be and to continue to pray for this nation. Pray for this country. Pray for the White House. Pray for, for every race, every creed, every color. Pray for, for fellow man because God is saying he is doing something. He is doing something in the land, in the nation, in the world. God is saying he is exposing 2021 is going to be the year of answers. Holy Spirit said to me that 2021 is going to be a year where we are looking for answers as the children of the Most High God, whether you're dealing with ailments, whether you're 
you know, in a in in toxic relationships or on a toxic uh, job. God is saying this year He is really exposing the enemy schemes and plots and twists in our lives, in the nation, in government. God is saying He is exposing. In 2021, God is saying that he wants us to seek him for answers. I know me, for example, and this is my testimony, for years I've been battling. I've been battling with health ailments, a couple of health ailments. And it took God exposing something at a doctor's appointment for me to say, you know what? I want to explore my body more. I want to know why I'm going through certain things. And usually in the past, I'd say, ah, you know what? I'm going to take some ibuprofen. I'll suck it up and I'll be okay. But God said, no, not this time. God said, where I am taking you, you need to be strong. Where I am taking you, you can't be sick. Where I am taking you, you you can't call off. Where I am taking you, you cannot be weak. So there's something different in me. I uh, Let me tell you, I'm working out. I'm feeling good. I'm eating good. Listen, let me tell you, God will put you where you're supposed to be because the exact office, because I work in the medical field, the exact medical office, doctor's office that I am working in, God put me there specifically because that's a part of my body that God is saying, I need you to take a look at it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are so good. God loves us so much. God is so powerful. God is so merciful. God is so just wonderful that he will put you in the right place at the right time. I don't know who needed to hear this tonight, but God is saying he is putting you in the right place at the right time. God is saying he is going to put you in the right place at the right time. So keep believing in him. So 2021 is going to be the year of resolution, the year of answers, the year of seeking, of sifting, of exposing so that God could destroy every plot and scheme of the enemy to rebuild and to restore store in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, this land, this nation, his people, his children, the church. God is saying he is restoring his bride. He is restoring families. Prodigals are returning in the name of Jesus. Lost sons and daughters are returning in the name of Jesus. God said all is not lost. God is saying all is not lost. He is here. He is here. He is in the land. He is in the nation. He is in the White House. He is in our homes. He is in our hearts. God is saying he is here and he is not going anywhere in the name of Jesus. My God, my God, my God. Let's get some more scripture in here. Woohoo! All right. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. Jeremiah 29, 11 through seven through 12 for I know the plans I have for you says the Lord plans for good and not for evil to give you a future and a hope my God my God my God I know many of us we have been so dismayed it's been dark the energy has been dark it's been intense because of this election because of warfare because many of us are giving birth we are in labor getting ready to give birth to ministries to businesses many of us have been battling with just just a uh, bloodline uh, generational curses and God has been sifting and destroying just the plots and the schemes of the enemy and God is saying I know it's painful I know it's painful but you have to trust me you have to trust me that I have plans plans not to harm you but to do good in your life in the name of Jesus hallelujah thank you Lord so right now God is saying it's imperative as we go through this crisis, as we go through this pandemic, that we focus on him more now than ever. And God is saying he is so intentional because many of us have been alienated. We have been restricted from traveling. We have been restricted from living the life that we normally we would normally lead. And God is saying this is why I had to quiet things down with this pandemic. You had to be separated from some people, from some things. You had to be slowed down because you were constantly on the go. God is saying that is why things have had to happen. So I could get you where I needed you, where I could get you alone. I could get you in that private space. I could get you in that quiet space. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is saying that 
This is the time. This is a time where we need to draw closer to him during this time of crisis. And you know, on my job, everybody is so fearful. Everybody is so worried about what's going to happen. They see the tent up where they're testing people for the coronavirus. But you have to remember, it is flu season. So people are going to cough and sneeze and think, oh, I may have COVID. But, but really, it could just be the flu, a strand of the flu that we usually get every year. So we're going to see a lot of fear during this time. People we work with, people are going to be afraid that they're going to be sent home, laid off. We're really coming up against a few rough months where we don't know what it's going to look like. But God is saying, you have to have faith. You have to have faith. You have to press on in the name of Jesus. You have to remember who I am and who you belong to in the name of Jesus. So God is saying, press into your Bible. Press into your word. Press into his presence. Be alone with him. Spend time with him. Get to know him. Don't be so focused on the promise, but be focused on him. Be focused on building a relationship with him. Be focused on allowing him to heal you. Many of us are on here for prophetic word after prophetic word on our kingdom spouses and on 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 you know what can God do for me but God is saying when are you just gonna be alone with me for me you say you love me but when are you gonna come and be in my presence just to spend time with me without wanting without needing without asking just to be in my presence because you love me that's all God is saying he wants more of us he wants more of us and for us to be focused on our relationship with him and not so much of the promise but to allow him to take us through the process before we could get to the promise God is saying I know for many of you you're hurting for many of you you You've been alienated from your loved ones. For many of you, you're confused and you don't understand why things have happened, why you've lost some people because we've lost relatives, we've lost friends due to this pandemic. We're going to see a lot of death. We're going to see a lot of things happening in our nation that we're not going to, people are not going to understand it. The deaths we've already been seeing, people being killed, people being shot, suicide. We're going to see things. We're going to see death. But God is saying, do not be afraid because he is God. He is our God. He is our mighty God. He is our Savior. And God is saying, do not be afraid because you know who you are in me. You know who I am. I am your God, Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And God said, I left the comforter with you. I left the Holy Spirit with you to guide you at all times so you are not alone you have to push through during this time of crisis press in with him but push through in him and don't focus so much on what's going on and what it looks like because what it looks like is not what it's going to be like hallelujah thank you jesus whoever needed to hear this write this down it, it what it looks like is not what it's going to be so take some time right now Grab your pen, grab a, grab your journal, grab your notebook, and just jot down some notes. Just jot down how we can go into these next few months, okay, just with a different attitude. How, we, how can you get closer to God? Take some time right now just to write down, just to journal right now how you can be closer to God. What can you do? Going into this new year, right, we have some resolutions, right? Oh, I want to lose some weight. Oh, I want to, you know, be happier. But how about how can I draw closer to the Lord? How can I focus on the good and not focus on the negative? How how can we get through this time during this this flu season, during this um this this post election season, and and as we transition from one party to the next or whatever God sees fit? How can I go through get through this? How can I prepare my family? How can I draw closer to God? That's really something that God has pressed on me that He wants us to do. Start to plan. Start to plan. Plan your months. Plan your days. Plan your years. Have goals. Have a vision right have a vision but God is saying just just write down right now write down some things that you can hold on to and take with you into this new year because we're going to see some things but God is going to move despite the negative despite some of the bad despite some of the setbacks the separations and and the stretching on all levels and the exposing God is saying ultimately it is for our good ultimately it's for the good of the nation all right I love you guys thank you for tuning into our conference and look out for Shonora with her video up next I love you God bless
Hi everyone, my name is Sophia. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I pray that this conference is blessing you thus far. We've all gathered here today to cry out to God for a move of his spirit in the earth as our nation is in a dire crisis and we need him now more than ever. And I honestly can't think of a better time for us to gather on one accord to cry out to him for the nations to see his goodness and glory displayed here on the earth. So I would like to take a quick moment and join with you guys in prayer over our nation. Heavenly Father, what an honor and privilege it is that we even get to call you Father, and we do not take that lightly. Father, we honor your presence with us on today. Our nation is in turmoil, crying, travailing, groaning, and moaning for a move of your spirit, Father. We need you now more than ever. As your children, we have the power and authority to bring heaven down to earth, but we have to open our mouths and we have to declare your word over the nation. The enemy had a plot, but God, you have a plan that will prevail above all things that the enemy has set out for us. Father, your word says that whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever we loose on earth will be loose in heaven. So we're here to bind and loose some things tonight. Father, I bind, cast down and rebuke the spirits of violence, death and wickedness over the nations of the world. I lose peace, life, and righteousness, Father. As the body of Christ, we have to come back together on one accord because the enemy has came in and he has sowed discord in between us and we're on opposite sides where we need to be together. We are the example that needs to be set in the earth. We have to bring your kingdom here, but we have to be unified again in order for that to occur. So right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of division that the enemy has has tried to sow within your children. Thank you for bringing us back together in peace, unity, and love so that we can accomplish your plan. As you know that when there's the vision there, the plan cannot be accomplished. So that was the enemy's goal was to come through and divide us so that we will get distracted and not be focused on what we were sent here to do, which was to do your will and your work here on the earth. Right now, Father, the world is in chaos. There are so many things going on, so many things that we have never seen before that we could never imagine that we would see. But Father, although there is chaos and confusion going all around us, you bring peace, calmness, and clarity to your children. We will see it, but it will not affect our homes or our families. Father, there is much more coming. I thank you for guidance, instruction, and preparation that you have given to your children. Father, for in the famine, we will not lack per, per Psalms 37, 19. I pray your peace and your understanding and your guidance over every individual that will attend this conference. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be clarity and peace for your children. No more confusion. No more misunderstandings. They will heed the word of the Lord the moment that it is spoken. Father, I thank you that your word goes forth in your sons and daughters and accomplishes the very thing that it was sent to do. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every individual speaker that will speak tonight at this conference. May you speak through their minds and may the hearts of the people that will attend be prepared to receive and heed the word of the Lord. Father, I thank you and honor you that as your children, we are the righteous and we have the advantage over the enemy. There is nothing that comes off guard to you. There is no surprise to you. You, you are all knowing and all being. Father, I thank you for going before us and pre preparing the way and making the crooked places straight. Thank you for being our strong tower. Thank you that you have never lost the battle and you're not going to start on today. Heavenly Father, I thank you that as we cry out to you, you start to move. As we bind these things on earth, you bind them in heaven. And as we loose your plan and your purposes for this nation, you loose it in heaven. Heavenly Father, we anxiously await the goodness and the glory of the Lord to be seen here on the earth. Father, souls will come into the kingdom into multitudes and it is all because your children have turned back to you and sought your face on this matter. Father, I thank you for hearing our cries and honoring our requests in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. I pray that you all are blessed by this conference. I pray that you will be challenged and changed and that you will not leave the same. Thank you and have a great day. Goodbye. Welcome back, everyone. That was an amazing word from Prophetess Kristen Laurie. Now I'd like to take the time to tell you about the services that we offer in our ministry. We offer mentoring, one-on-one -on -one sessions, strategy building, and we also have two clubs. Our first club is the Daughter of the True King, which is for women who are working professionally, 
moms, and ministry leaders who want to grow more in God. The second club, the Kingdom Builders, in which I lead, where Christians from all backgrounds come together for prayer, encouragement, and edification. So if you're interested in either of these clubs, please jot down my email in the comments below, and I'll be happy to assist you. And now, let's just rest in God's presence. I'm going to grab my journal and put on some worship music. You can grab your Bible and also journal, or just sit in God's presence during this time. Praise God. Now I'd like to introduce you to our next speaker, Stephen. Enjoy. Hey everyone. I am going to be talking to you guys today about spiritual warfare. And just if you don't know, if you are a Christian and don't know, when you became a Christian and accepted the Lord as your Savior, you entered into a battle, a spiritual one that you cannot see. Um, I know that many people don't talk about spiritual warfare and the ramifications of it, but we are in a cosmic war that's consistently happening, and you, my fellow brother or sister, are on the battlefield. So the one thing is that Ephesians six twelve says, "Is for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces, forces of evil in the heavenly places." And that's just that starting verse. But from that one starting verse, we can gather a lot. Is that whoever gets us mad is. We're not supposed to be fighting against them. Whatever we may be feeling spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, there is always a spiritual component to it. Um, so that's the other thing that I will say, is that the spiritual forces never stop. They never stop. So the one thing I will say to you guys is learn to recognize the evil. Because spiritual warfare is intense, it gets tough, and the only way to win is through prayer, fasting, and scriptures. So, learning to recognize evil or learning the evil one. So, we can think that evil is doing something that isn't right, something that goes against what we believe in and how we are. But the one thing I've realized is that shame, pride, or any other um, condemn condemnation that we can tend to bring on ourselves 
um, can play a role in the spiritual warfare that we um, have to deal with. So the other thing I just want to bring up is that the, the enemy will always try to trick you into into saying that you're you're not good enough, you're not you're not this, you're not that, you know, and he might even throw scriptures at you like just saying that you'll never match up to what God has for you or to where you need to be necessarily. And the one thing I've learned is that we all have fallen short of God's glory. And what happens is that we tend to be put against lying and hurting and lusts. So the other thing that I notice is that if we want to fight and learn how to fight effectively, we have to know who we are and know the power that we hold as individuals of the kingdom and as a child of God. So Jesus has given us several promises, and I'll just name a few. So he promises that whatever we ask, he will do. That's John 14, 13 through 14. He said that he will never turn himself away from us. That's John 6, 37. He has compassion for us, for our shortcomings. That's Mark 2 and 17. So the one thing that will activate these promises is our faith. Is our faith. Faith is the key. <laughs> because it's a, it aligns us with him and, and it allows him to be able to be protective to, over us and to allow his power to reign through us. So the one thing, well, many things that I've found out in my own walk is that repentance works, prayer works, worship works, fasting works. Prayer is the one thing that will get you to where it needs to be. So God wants to always hear from us, regardless of what is going on. But the power only comes from God. So talk to him, cry out to him, ask for help when you don't know what to do, and believe that he will show up for you no matter what happens. Um, so the other thing I've realized is that praying the scriptures works and it helps with everything that you're going through. So for me, I've experienced that praying the battle prayers of Chronicles, of Exodus, of every, of every other scripture that I can't really think of at the moment, <laughs> um, gets us to where we need to be. And even taking an... Even taking another scripture, for example, James 4 and 7, um, su submit yourself to God and the devil will flee. I think that's the, the easiest thing that we can do as Christians, but it can be the hardest thing when we're going through trials and tribulations because we don't, we don't necessarily even know if God is there. But the one thing I will say to you is that God is always there no matter what you go through. He is always there. He will always be there for you no matter what you're going through. So worship is another thing that I've, that I've hit is that we tend to get lost in translation of what is going on. But what worship does is it allows us to get back into the presence of God. And it's also a powerful weapon against the enemy because the enemy does not want us to worship at all. Singing to God or even speaking the statement like, God is my peace, God is my refuge, God is my hope, God is my strength. It will turn us away from the situation that we are facing and back onto Jesus, Jesus' promise. As it says in John 10 and 10, that he is to give us life and to give us life more abundantly. Fasting is a powerful powerful prayer that helps us remember to rely on God. You can fast from food, as Jesus modeled, or fast from any social media or anything that is needed to be done for you um, with whatever God tells you to do. I'm not, I'm not saying to stick yourself in one area and just do it. 
Um, when we temporarily remove ourselves from other things, we tend to start to hear from God more and become more like him. The other thing I will say is read your Bible and hear his voice. So one of the best ways to fight the enemy's lies is to know God's truth by start reading your word. Understand your identity in Christ. Find that online through a community, whether that be through Bible study, or just simply type in identity in Christ and start speaking those scriptures over yourself and speak who you are of Christ into yourself because no one else is going to do it. Yes, you can have people around you, but you have to do the work yourself. Memorize verses that are meaningful to you and challenge you. Ask God to help you to hear his voice throughout your day and throughout everything that you're going through. Because then you'll be able to recognize what is true and what is not. So the one thing that I will say is continue to draw near to God. And he will never, ever leave you. Hello there. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Oh, it's such a blessing to be here. It's such a blessing to be on this platform and I want to give honour. I want to thank the woman of God, Prophetess Kristen Laurie, for allowing me to be one of the speakers at the, you know, this amazing conference. So thank you so much, woman of God. I honour you and I'm so excited to deliver this word to the people of God. And I want to just be comfortable with you guys. I want you guys to interact. I want you guys to engage with me. I want you to write down below where you are watching from, what state, what country. I want to know. Just write it down in the comments. Let me know where you where you're watching from. Now you're probably wondering where am I from? No, I'm not from America, as you can tell by my accent. My name is Rafaro. I'm 21 years old and I live in England, as you can tell by my accent. I'm originally African, but I've been in the UK since I was about two years old, so quite a long time. And yeah, so that's a little bit about me. I am also an educator, I'm a writer, I'm a speaker, and I do other things on the side alongside working in anointed with power ministries which is an absolute blessing and i'm so grateful grateful to be connected to these amazing people of god so you know what youtubers say okay i just want to get cracking i want to get straight into this i don't want to waste too much of his time okay disclaimer number one i do not want to waste too much of your time you know what church preachers say oh you know i'll only be half an hour I'll only be an hour and then the whole thing turns out to be a two hour, three day revival. But I promise you, I will not be here for long. And I want someone to hold me accountable in the comment section, okay? I won't be here for long, I promise, I promise you. Okay, so like I said, you know what the YouTubers say? They say, get some tea, get some coffee, you know, get a coffee, get some biscuits or some cookies. But we're not going to be, you know, we're not here to nibble, we're here to nibble off the word of god so i want you to get your bible i want you to get a notepad and i want you to get a pen and i want your hearts to be open and to be ready to receive and you know just a short prayer right now father i thank you for these individuals who are watching today i thank you for the lives that you've entrusted to us oh god to to release your word and father even now i just break down i break even um depression or heaviness whatever the people of god are experiencing in this season no matter all you know with all this pressure going on in this world i pray that that will be broken in jesus name and i declare that you have hope you shall make it to 2021 you won't break you won't break in jesus name and father i just release this word into your hands and i pray that it's a blessing for the people of god and that it will bear fruit into the lives of the readers in jesus name i pray amen so like i said i won't be here too long but i want to get cracking with this word and disclaimer number two you okay i want you guys to engage okay I, i'm not too sure if i said that before but i want you guys to engage write down in the comments repeat what i'm saying or you can just comment you know emojis whatever it may be i want to engage with you all and i want this to be amazing this is the day that the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it i'm not too sure what the weather's like your side but over here in england you know 
you know, sometimes, well, a lot of times it's rainy and cold and very few times it's sunny. But otherwise, whatever the weather is, we are still going to have an amazing time. So, as you may already know, the whole theme of our conference is pressing through when the world is in crisis. Listen, 2020, like I said, you won't break you won't break just type it in the comments say i won't break i want you to release that into the atmosphere i will not break okay you will not break god brought you this far for a reason okay and you know in terms of the whole topic i want to kind of go you know a unique direction and i want to title this message and you guys can write it down as well who and what are you following Whew. There's so much to talk about with this one, but who and what are you following? What voices are you allowing into your spirit in this season? You know, there's so many voices from the news, from these people, you know, this prophetic group, those, pro that, there's just so, so many voices. But I want you to be careful. Who and what are you following in this season? Okay. And I really want to emphasize this to you. Okay. So that's going to teach him out now. Okay. I've got three objectives for you in this session. Okay. So number one. I want you to be able to realize the importance of being connected to the right source and fountain in this season, okay? Number two, I want you to understand that the well that you are drawing from in this season will either nourish you or it will deprive you, okay? Someone write down in the comments, nourish or deprive, okay? And number three, I want you to be able to use godly wisdom okay godly wisdom to determine who you should be following and what you should be following you need wisdom okay so let me just start off with the story you know I, I wish this story was exciting and bubbly you know like all these are the youtube story times but no this story has a meaning to it and i want you to grasp it particularly with what we are talking about today okay so this was a while back. I'm going to try and make this story as short and snappy as possible. This was a while back and I basically received a word from someone. It was a prophetic word from someone and I was excited in that moment. They pulled me to the side and they told me that they have a word for me and I was like, okay, God, this is going to be exciting. This is going to be fun. And I received the word and let's just say it, it wasn't a positive word, okay? It was, it was more so this is going to happen to you, okay, this is going to happen to you, and there wasn't any sort of navigation or redemptive nature towards that prophetic word, and of course, I believe, you know, with prophetic protocol, that's very important, whether it's a word of warning or something which may not necessarily be positive, it's always important to be redemptive with the word at the end as well, so I heard this word, and I was a bit confused, but I, I, I allowed it to get to my heart, okay i allowed it to get to my heart okay so long story short so that night and in fact it, this went on for two nights straight i had the most craziest and most the dreams were scary as in looking back to it now with the wisdom that god has given me that was another spirit you know someone type in the comments another spirit the bible tells us we need to be careful you know there are a lot of doctrines of devils out there and there's another spirit which people are operating from okay and so because i received that word into my heart i may not have said with my mouth oh yeah you know i received that word but i allowed it to get into my heart i allowed that word to get into my heart Okay, and I don't want to blame the individual because I know that with the prophetic, um, I do believe that training is necessary. Some people are just immature and because they're immature and they're not trained, they may operate from the wrong spirit. Um, but yeah, in terms of this situation, I allowed this word to get into my heart. And because I accepted the word into my heart, it manifested. It manifested. It manifested. It manifested. And what you receive, who you allow to speak, whatever that word is, it will bear fruit somehow. 
it, you, you will see a man as long as you come into agreement with that word okay we're talking about things in the realm of the spirit you know okay this is not a lesson on you know the realm of the spirit but a, a lot to do with the spirit realm comes with legal right what you legally allow into your heart what you legally allow into your soul okay things will bear fruit okay and then of course it was just it was just a terrible situation for me spiritually and then i ended up going to a leader um in the church and this individual um prayed for me and they broke whatever was attached to me in the spirit from me receiving that word and then that you know the dreams and all of that negativity stopped but why am i saying this there are a lot of voices out here in the world people of god whether it be on youtube or people that you listen to you know different environments there are a lot of people but who and what are you following what are you allowing into your spirit okay we're in a new season prophetically speaking we are in a new era okay so we need to be careful okay remember what i said in the objectives what you allow into you will either nourish you or it will deprive you okay it will bear fruit or it will tear away from you or it will invite ungodly spirits and different things into your life and you do not need that especially in this climate you know we've got all these distractions coronavirus the elections you know or everything happening in the world you need to be connected to the right source you need to be getting the right word into your spirit okay and i want to use this example okay i like props i like to be creative okay so I want you to imagine that this is you, okay? And take this as encouragement as well, that you are going to flourish, okay? 2020, like I said, will not break you in Jesus' name. You will flourish in Jesus' name. So I want you to imagine that this is you, okay? So this is you. Imagine. And, oh, yeah, these are artificial. These are not real. But let's just pretend that they're real for this example, okay? And I want you to pretend that this is a person or a situation okay so this is some perfume i want you to pretend that this is a situation or a person okay and this is some water in a spray bottle i also want you to pretend that this is a situation or a person so what am i getting with all of this this is you okay this is you. You need to be sustained. In order to grow, it's just like with a baby. A baby needs milk, okay? They need to be sustained, okay? They need to be fed so that they can grow, okay? This is you. But if you're receiving from the wrong source, now, this source or this environment or these people or this voice, you know, it may look nice. Come on. It may even smell nice. Come on. But when you receive the wisdom tending on spraying but when you receive whatever wisdom because remember the you know we're told you know as believers we know that there's the wisdom of the world amen or the wisdom of the enemy and the wisdom of god okay when this person pours into you it may get to the you know the surface but it's not going to get to the roots it's not going to sustain you but when you have the right people or the right environment pouring into you it will help you from the root you see they're both liquids but they don't work with plants to you know this one doesn't work to sustain a plant it will make the plant smell nice it will make you look nice or it will help you for a certain time but it will not sustain you it will not get to the roots okay so why am i using this example i want you to be very careful people of god of what you allow into your life in this season okay like i said there's so many different voices but what are you going to accept into your spirit? This all links to discipleship. What is a disciple? A disciple is someone who ad adheres to and follows the doctrines or teachings of another. And we see this biblically even in the life of Jesus. He said, follow me. And as soon as he said that, people followed him. I love the example of Matthew. Matthew, he said he left it all. He left all those things. You know, he was quite wealthy because he was a tax collector. But he left it and he followed Jesus. That's discipleship. We, us as believers, following Christ. And it's okay to have other voices of influence. In the word of God, Paul says, follow me or imitate me as I imitate or follow Christ. So that's why we need to get to a place where, okay, we have the word, we have Christ helping us. But we can also have other voices, but you need to be discerning of the other voices that you allow to speak into your life. Okay, so I want to read a foundational scripture. Okay, 
now you don't have to turn to it because of time i'm just going to read it out for you but this is coming from ephesians chapter 5 in the amplified version okay so chapter um yeah ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 to 17 and the reading declares therefore see that you walk carefully living life with honor purpose and courage shunning those who tolerate and enable evil not as the unwise but as wise sensible intelligent discerning people making the very most of your time on earth recognizing and taking advantage of every opportunity and using it with wisdom and diligence because the days are filled with evil and verse 17 says therefore do not be foolish and thoughtless but understand and firmly grasp what the will of the lord is now i'm not going to go you know into dissecting this scripture but i want to point out some key words now this is apostle paul talking to the church in ephesus you know giving them wisdom exhorting them and of course as an apostle he has the duty to build and to establish so i believe that he was building and establishing these people in the way that they should go in terms of their conduct but a key word here and i want you to write this down is wisdom paul was first of all paul was a man of wisdom okay so they had that right voice in their sphere they had the right voice pouring into them but one thing that he exhorted them is for the people of god to be wise because the days are filled with evil and we can apply this to our own lives now there is so much coronavirus the elections you know the injustice happening all that's happened in this world the days are evil but who and what are you receiving from i want to give you an example and this also ties in the fact that you need to be careful with what you allow into your spirit because it will bear fruit i remember um i believe it was towards the start of the coronavirus particularly when it started to amplify here in the uk um a politician was on the news and he was speaking and he said he was given a statement, you know, for Great Britain. And he said, a lot of your family members are going to die. And I said, not my family. I rebuke that. Sorry, Mr. Politician, but I don't receive that word. I don't receive that word. Come on. Some, you know, some of you got to reject some words. You say, I don't receive that word because my Bible tells me in Psalms 91, with long life, he will satisfy us. Going in and going out, we are blessed. So I'm not going to receive that word. And why am I saying this is because a lot of you, you may have been listening to the news. You may have been listening to all of these voices and it's released a spirit of fear into your life it's released a spirit of anxiety you need to be careful you've allowed this or some some people speaking to you like they may look cute they may look pretty but they're not sustaining you to the root and when a plant is not getting what it needs it will become deprived and you i'm sure you have seen what a dead plant looks like the leaves start to wither it starts to turn brown and that's what happens in our lives when we're not receiving from the right source okay so i want you guys to be very very careful as to what you are receiving and allowing into your spirit with all of the noise happening in the world but number one what does that mean we need to receive from christ i want you to examine your devotion life do you have a devotion life okay how is your prayer life how is your time with jesus do you know jesus okay not just the jesus that people speak about come on but knowing him for yourself i want you to examine that and number two oh because why do i want you to do that because he is divine he is divine you are the branch and when you are connected to him you will be able to produce good fruits as the word says in john chapter 15 and on top of that the closer you get to him the more you will hear his voice so when you are in a position and someone's about to speak something to your life or you know there are so many voices and although the situation looks pretty you will be discerning enough to know i can't receive from this this isn't going to help me grow 
you know this wall you know it's pretty but i need to receive from this you'll be able to discern okay how is your devotion life and number two i want you to examine and know or just think about your church home okay is your church home sustaining you okay gone are the days when we just want a church because they look pretty Oh, you know, the lights are nice, you know, all these different things, you know, it looks physically appealing. And of course, you know, you know, it's nice to be in a church, you know, which looks nice. Come on. But are they are they sustaining you to the roof like what water will do? Will they will this environment help you? Will it be the right voice for you in this season? You know, don't be caught up in the whole spirit of, you know, oh, they're just old over there. You know, all you know, the the building's old, etc. But you've got to look deeper into the content. Okay, be careful. Are the words sustaining you? Are they growing you? Because you're gonna need this in this new season, people of God, you know. The word, you know, we have so many tools, so many tools in this word, okay? Uh, you know, you're going to need to get into your word, particularly in these times that we're living in. The days are evil, the word of God says it, but the people of God shall be saved. This is why I don't fear, and this is why I don't want you to listen to the spirit of fear. We shall be saved, but you need to be careful with who you're receiving from and what you're allowing into your spirit. I believe number three, and I want you to examine who you are connected to, your friendship if you believe that you don't have any suitable people around you who can build and nourish you okay and not just choosing friendships because they look cute come on that's the whole situation oh you know i want to be friends with that person because i like their hair oh i like their makeup oh i like their outfit but they're not helping you you need to be around them people they may not look cute Come on, they may not look how you expect, but they're going to be the ones to help you. They're going to be the ones to sustain you and not deprive you, okay? And I want you to write down in the comments, drain or sustain, okay? I want you to go about the rest of this day remembering this plant, okay? I want you to remember and have it pondering in your mind and just praying, God, help me in terms of who I should follow and what I should be following in this season. There are so many voices, but I want to be able to adhere to the right voice. And I need wisdom. The Bible says if you need wisdom, ask for it and he will give it to you. Ask for it and he will give it to you. Ask the Lord for wisdom. The days are evil. We see all these things happening. But when you're connected to the right source, you will flourish. You will go forth. You will develop in who God has called you to be. I hope that this message has inspired you and encouraged you. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. And let me know what you guys thought. What season are you in? Okay, write down in the comments, you know, what season are you in? What's going on in your life? Okay, make sure you're connected to the right people. And I pray that this word will, you know, birth fruit into your life. I just pray, Father, even now that you would release wisdom into the people, God, that they know which source to dwell from, that you would give them the discern, the spirit of discernment, that you would give them wisdom, oh God, to be able to connect to the thing that will sustain them and not being deceived by what looks pretty but will not help them. Open the eyes of your people, God, wherever you're taking them the next season. I pray, oh God, that they have the right voices and the right connections to help sustain them thank you so much people of god for listening to this word i pray that it blessed you and i pray that the rest of this conference will bless you abundantly thank you so much god bless you